Chapter 71 Apology You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 71 Apology Translator Imperfect Luck Editor VB24 Chiaki had informed Seiji prior to the meeting about her ex-girlfriend. But since they had never contacted each other since breaking up, Chiaki didn't know which school Haruka Shimizu was currently studying at. That was why Seiji received such an unexpected shock. But it actually wasn't that important. Both Haruka Shimizu and Tetsuo Sakaki didn't have any apparent reaction upon seeing Seiji, which meant that they didn't even recognize Seiji as the depraved otaku that used to attend their school. Perhaps neither of them knew the original Seiji, or perhaps they were unable to recognize the current Seiji. He didn't know which it was. The original Seiji didn't know either of these two people, but due to his infamous reputation at Kawaki, there were plenty of students that knew him but not vice versa. It didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. Even if they recognized him, Seiji felt like nothing of significance would follow. It wasn't like either of these two were his family members who he wronged to such a great degree, they were only strangers that had nothing to do with the original Seiji. Dot Haruka Shimizu's sharp senses perceived that the boy across from her had been slightly shaken. Was his discomfort related to the fact that she'd introduced herself as a student from Kawaki High School? Kawaki High School was a famous school in this district. Many of its students hailed from rich, governmental, or powerful families. The other students all specialized in various fields and were among the top scoring students in the country. It was definitely a modern dot day school for nobles. Normal schools couldn't even compare to Kawaki High School, and while Genhana High School was above average, they simply weren't on the same level. Seigo Harano probably knew of Kawaki High School's illustrious reputation and had received a shock upon hearing that she and Tetsuo studied there. That was what Haruka believed. The handsome boy's shock instantly disappeared without a trace after a brief moment, but Haruka was already certain that he wasn't as calm as he appeared. Was he only, a decorative but empty dot headed person? A sudden impulse from somewhere almost made Haruka want to classify him as such, but her logical reasoning told her that it wasn't wise to judge others so hastily. Gen Hana High School, that's a decent school, and I've heard that the clubs there have lively atmospheres. She started a topic of conversation. Chiaki, what club are you currently in? Drama Club. Chiaki had already recovered her composure as she answered lightly. Not a sports club. Haruka blinked in confusion. I thought that you'd be more like when you were at Yashimizu Middle School, but Drama Club is nice, too. You seem suited for acting. Yeah, whenever I'm acting on stage, I can temporarily forget myself. I forget my real identity, and what I've experienced, it's much more comfortable to act as characters other than myself. Chiaki rested her chin on her hands as she made a subtle, cold statement. Haruka's expression froze over. How scary. Seiji could only inwardly sigh at the grudge Chiaki evidently bore. So this was probably the true reason that Chiaki joined the drama club. She wanted to mitigate her own painful feelings after being dumped. Saying it so straightforwardly to her ex-girlfriend was akin to a direct attack. Humph. A cold snort sounded out from Tetsuo Sakaki, the arrogant youth seated beside Haruka. His eyes were filled with condescension as he looked at Chiaki. Seiji frowned. Did you make a sound just now, he asked Tetsuo without any hesitation. Tetsuo Sakaki turned to face him, the same condescending look still in his eyes. What if? Tetsuo, Haruka's voice interrupted him mid-speech, don't be rude. She glanced over at her companion as she reprimanded him. I didn't say anything. The brown-dot-haired boy extended his hands in a gesture of innocence as he shrugged and slightly restrained the condescension in his eyes. His attitude, however, displayed his true thoughts clearly. It's obvious that you have something you want to say. A calm-dot-sounding voice echoed out. It belonged to Chiaki. Your name is Tetsuo Sakaki, right? Why don't you just say whatever you were thinking it out loud? Chiaki. 
Haruka, since the beginning, this boyfriend of yours has carried a scornful attitude, yet he won't voice his thoughts. It's like he isn't even a man. Chiaki arced her mouth upwards in a taunting smile. He's a petty gossiper who enjoys talking about people behind their backs. Disgusting. A sudden chill swept through the room. What the hell, Wakaba.sensei? You're really challenging them now. Seiji felt the urge to clutch his head. What did you just say? As expected, Tetsuo Sakaki was furious. Not many boys would be able to withstand a taunt like that, and this brown dot haired boy definitely wasn't the type who had a good temper. Besides, in his heart he truly looked down on Chiaki and Seiji to begin with, so he was unable to bear any disrespect from those he deemed unworthy. Tetsuo. Haruka raised her voice. They were the ones being rude first, you heard it too. Haruka. Sakaki glanced at his female companion before viciously focusing on the pair in front of him again. Sorry, my girlfriend has a straightforward personality, she voices whatever's on her mind. Seiji smiled as he tried to alleviate the tension in the air. Chiaki, you went overboard with what you said just now, hurry up and apologize. Mm. Fine. Since Seigo says so. Chiaki smiled at him in response as she straightened her back, sitting more formally. My sincere apologies. I was too direct. The two of them smiled the same way, and even their attitudes and tones almost completely matched. They were saying sorry, but it sounded completely insincere. You guys. Tetsuo Sakaki's face started twitching. In his perspective, he probably thinks we're a couple of bastards that love to make fun of others, Seiji thought in his mind. My bad, it's your own fault for being such an easy target. You're too easy to read, young man. It was obvious that Chiaki wasn't in a good mood right now, and Seiji could understand her feelings. Seiji was resolutely on Chiaki's side, so unfortunately for Tetsuo Sakaki, he was doomed to become the target of their mockery. Tetsuo, they apologized already. Haruka sighed. They're not sincerely apologizing at all. Tetsuo stated a fact. What? This time it was Seiji who intentionally raised his voice by a dozen decibels. Seiji's gaze sharpened as he stared directly into the brown dot haired boy's eyes. What did you say? Sakaki, San. My girlfriend's apology has been quite clear. Just what do you mean by saying we're not apologetic? You think it's not enough? Could it be that, you think that only something like kneeling to you is, enough, of an apology? He even added a hint of anger to his last sentence. Of course, it was faked. It was sufficient enough to suppress Tetsuo, however. Air. Tetsuo Sakaki was slightly shaken and shocked at Seiji's sudden imposing manner. He'd never expected the boy who he looked down on just a few seconds ago would suddenly become so intimidating. Seiji's sharp gaze seemed like it could pierce right through Tetsuo. A momentary silence filled the room. Haruka was also astonished at how powerfully spirited the boy in front of her seemed to be. Was it that he hadn't been shaken earlier at all? But why did it seem like he had been shaken at the mention of Kawaki High School? She didn't understand. My apologies, my boyfriend's rather impulsive, honestly. He just can't bear to see me wronged, Chiaki said in a soft voice. She then looked toward Seiji and said, Hey, he seems to frighten. Hurry up and apologize. Mmm. Okay, since Chiaki says so. Seiji relaxed his facial expression in order to appear calmer and sat up more formally. My apologies, my words just now were in the heat of the moment, please don't mind them. He <laughs> he. Chiaki and Seiji wore matching smiles on their faces and bore the exact same attitude from earlier, but reversed. Their synchronization rate was 100% perfect. Tetsuo Sakaki was rendered speechless. His face reddened with an anger that could only tumultuously toss and turn inside his chest without being let out. It was as if he could hear them taunting him beneath the thin veneer of their polite words, Hey, 
little boy, we're just toying with you. Chapter 72 Truth You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 72 Truth Translator Imperfect Luck Editor VB24 Tetsuo Sakaki felt like agreeing to this meeting had been a mistake in the first place. As the ace member of the karate club and one of the top dot ranked students in Kawaki High School, he was bursting with confidence. Kawaki High School was already a gathering ground for the best of the best, so standing at the top even among them was definitely something to be proud of. In his eyes, he only regarded his classmates as well as those equal to or above him in status. Tetsuo Sakaki couldn't even be bothered with those who he considered as below him. Of course, that included students from other schools that weren't of the same quality as Kawaki High School. He failed to grasp the reason behind Haruka Shimizu's stubbornness regarding this matter. Genhana High School This normal girl was from a low-dot-rated school which wasn't even worth paying attention to. Yes, they previously bore affection for each other, but that was over with now. It was wrong to continue it. Since Haruka already decided to break up, she should have said goodbye to Chiaki forever and never bothered with her again, but... He'd already directly told Haruka he didn't understand why she was doing this, but Haruka remained adamant about continuing, so he could only accompany her. Haruka was too much of a softy. Such a girl wasn't even worth her attention or love. At this moment, Tetsuo Sakaki was more certain of this than anything else. The two of you, don't even know you're basically no different from garbage. His eyes were filled with unrestrained condescension as he finally voiced his true thoughts. Tetsuo. Haruka raised her voice. Don't stop me, Haruka. You saw how rude they were being for yourself. Tetsuo gave Haruka a sidelong glance before glaring at the two in front of him again. We were nice enough to meet up with them, but they're being so rude to us. They're nothing but scum. Seiji and Chiaki retracted their fake smiles as they exchanged glances. It appeared. Yep, it was exposed rather quickly, the true face of the arrogant boy. They both anticipated this scene, so their attitudes remained calm. Tetsuo felt another wave of anger sweep through his heart, he was incensed at being seen through by the duo he'd looked upon. If only he could have remained calm, perhaps he would have realized the mistake he was making, but the current him was blinded by rage and arrogance. He stood up violently and pounded the table with his fist, causing hot coffee to spill out of the cups. Let's go, Haruka. These scumbags aren't even worth our time, slap, a clear sound resounded throughout the room. The blue dot haired girl had slapped the brown dot haired boy. Tetsuo was shocked at the sudden slap and was left dazed. You, stop acting so shameful. Haruka stood up and yelled in a low voice as she struggled to suppress the burning rage which welled up within her. Although she knew that the boy with her wasn't very reliable, she didn't expect him to fall for their taunts so easily. In actuality, Haruka's sudden loss of control over her own emotions surprised her even more than her classmates' poor behavior. Witnessing how shamefully Tetsuo was acting, she acted on sudden impulse and ended up slapping him. This shouldn't be. Her normal self wouldn't do such a thing. At this moment Haruka Shimizu finally realized how shaken she truly was deep inside. A withering silence reigned over the room for several moments. Chiaki finally sighed wistfully, breaking the silence. Haruka. Actually, I really missed you. A soft, gentle expression appeared on Chiaki's face for the first time as she looked at the blue dot-haired girl. Chiaki. Haruka returned the silver dot-haired girl's gaze. After separating from you, I thought about you. Every day, every moment, for such a long time, Chiaki began slowly. Every time I thought about what you said while breaking up with me, my heart would ache. You said so much, and all of it was logical. But none of that was important to me. I didn't care, I couldn't comprehend or accept the reasons. I only knew that you wanted to break up with me, and you were resolute about it. It hurt me severely. Nevertheless. I still loved you. 
A teardrop formed in the corner of Chiaki's eye and slowly dripped down her pale white cheek. Haruka was unable to come up with words as she listened to Chiaki's heartfelt words. Tetsuo still hadn't regained his senses. If he had dared to say anything to ruin the current mood, Seiji definitely would have smacked him a good one in the mouth. Wordlessly, a tissue was handed over to Chiaki. Of course, the only one who would do this was Seiji. Chiaki wiped her eyes with the tissue and took a deep breath. Finally, I was able to overcome it. One reason was the fun club I was in. Although the drama club president is a bit of a weird person, she's really nice, and everyone else in drama club is nice as well. Another reason was one of my best friends who clumsily approached me and consoled me when I was at my most disconsolate. Even though she herself was unaware of it. Chiaki smiled lightly. Finally, I got to know Seigo. She glanced at the boy beside her with a gentle expression. When I was hanging out with him. I had lots of fun, even more than before. That's when I received your phone call. Chiaki shot Haruka a look filled with deep emotion. I was surprised and happy, yet frightened. I didn't know why you did it, but no matter the reason, I still wished to meet you. You told me that you were bringing your boyfriend, which hurt me deeply, but that wouldn't stop me from wanting to see you. Even though I was so afraid, even though I knew this might not be a joyous meeting, I wanted to see you. I, miss you. Haruka. Glistening tears rolled down from Chiaki's eyes which currently flashed with various complex emotions. Chiaki. Haruka Shimizu could no longer maintain her impassive expression, even she could not veil her true feelings which were hidden deep within herself. Complex sadness, nostalgia, and longing burst out from the confines of her heart. She walked over to Chiaki, kneeled, and hugged her. Sorry. I'm sorry. Tears also slid down the blue dot haired girl's cheeks. Everything was my fault. Sorry, Chiaki. Actually. I, missed you too. Seiji remained silent, respecting this heart dot touching scene. After a while, he stood up noiselessly and looked at Tetsuo. Tetsuo Sasaki was still reeling from Haruka's slap, but he'd almost regained his clarity of mind. Seiji stared at him until Tetsuo noticed, and gave him a silent signal. Let's talk outside. If Tetsuo couldn't even understand such a simple gesture, Seiji was about to give him a good lesson on how to behave. Luckily, the brown dot haired boy wasn't that stupid. Tetsuo Sasaki gave a parting glance towards the two girls, before following Seiji out of the room. After leaving the room, I deeply apologize for my rude words earlier. Seiji began with a sincere apology right off the bat. His tone of voice suddenly turned cold as he continued, but that was also because the look in your eyes was quite unpleasant. You shouldn't believe that you're good at concealing it. Tetsuo remained silent. I don't know if you're really that girl's boyfriend or not, nor do I care, but taking your attitude into account, they won't be able to have a good conversation. That's why I had to expose your true self first. Seiji bluntly told him the truth. I also don't know, nor care, why you were looking down on us. At any rate, you're just an unimportant character, it doesn't matter what you think. But I'll never allow you to interfere with Chiaki. She mustered her courage and resolved herself to potentially having her feelings wounded again by coming here. As her companion, my role is to remove all obstacles for her. Now, let us wait here for them until they're finished talking. If you dare to try anything, I swear that you'll never be able to do anything again. Seiji didn't say that last sentence out loud, and stood there in silence, ignoring Tetsuo. Bedo Dem Tetsuo Sasaki was currently battling with complex emotions. He had been slapped by Haruka and saw her true feelings revealed. He finally had an inkling of the mistake he had made. That girl. Chiaki Wakaba was someone that Haruka had truly been in love with before. However, he looked down on her. He was condescending towards her, and he'd ignored Haruka's feelings. He fell for such a simple taunt and exposed his way of thinking. 
that was why Haruka got angry at him. He totally deserved that slap he received. Tetsuo felt downcast after coming to this realization. He didn't intend to hurt Haruka's feelings but made such a mistake. Haruka, would she hate him now? Tetsuo felt like she wouldn't because she was a softy inside. However, this made his heart ache even more. Ah man. What have I done? The arrogant boy suddenly fell into a state of self-loathing. He then noticed the handsome boy who stood beside him wordlessly. This guy, was actually quite smart. Thinking about what this person had spoken and done, Tetsuo could only shamefully admit to himself that the other boy had completely outwitted him. Seigo Harano, from Genhana High School. Tetsuo etched this name into his mind. Chapter 73 Isn't your boyfriend still outside? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 73 Isn't your boyfriend still outside? Translator Imperfect Luck Editor VB24 Inside the room, the two girls finally calmed down a little and were drinking coffee in silence. As I expected, I still, love this coffee's flavor the most. Chiaki smiled gently at Haruka. The taste of coffee that you personally brewed for me. Is that so? Haruka averted her gaze as her cheeks flushed slightly red. Honestly, wasn't this exactly just like before? But there was no helping it, even though she knew that she shouldn't, these were her real feelings. Although she tried her utmost to restrain herself and to forget, she couldn't. That alluringly sweet, dazzling, mesmerizing time she spent together with Chiaki. It had been like a dream she couldn't wake up from. Haruka thought that she had gotten over Chiaki after breaking up with her for so long. For the first time, she discovered that she was still hung up on her. She told herself she brought a male companion in order to prevent Chiaki from getting close to her again. But on closer inspection that was probably, her fear of facing her true inner self. How terrible am I, like her classmate outside, Haruka Shimizu also fell into a state of self-loathing. At this moment, Chiaki took her hand. Chiaki gently caressed her hand before bringing it to her soft lips and licking gently. As her cute red tongue darted out, she eyed Haruka with a seductive expression. Haruka's face instantly turned bright red. That gaze, these feelings, they're so distressing. Her body trembled slightly, half in fear and half in anticipation. Chiaki used well-practiced motions as she licked every inch of Haruka's fingers, fingertips, back of her hand, and palm of her hand. Without missing a single spot, Chiaki licked her softly and gently, taking her time as if she was tasting an exquisitely fine meal. As the blue dot haired girl's trembling became more and more obvious and her cheeks flamed crimson red, Chiaki gently pulled Haruka into her arms. Haruka suddenly regained her senses. N. No. We've already broken up, we can't, however, her resistance was so soft and helpless that it didn't seem like she was resisting at all. To Chiaki, Haruka seemed like she'd regained her feelings for Chiaki as her eyes were watery, her face flushed completely red, and her tiny mouth was slightly puckered open. Dot Chiaki brought her face close to Haruka's, then leaned in and kissed her. Mmm. Ah. After their lips came into contact, they stuck together as they mashed lips. Haruka felt like all her energy had been drained, she could only allow Chiaki to tightly hold on to her body and let Chiaki do whatever she wanted. We can't, she was shouting this in her heart, but her body had zero strength as she was enjoying this, unable to resist. Time became a blur to them. After losing track of time, Haruka finally felt herself being released. Chiaki licked her lips in an alluring expression that seemed like she was saying, thanks for the meal. Wah. Honestly. Haruka summoned a sliver of energy and lightly hit Chiaki. We can't be like this. Your, your boyfriend, isn't he waiting outside for you? Oh, do you care a lot about him? Chiaki chuckled. This, this isn't about whether or not I care about him. You're the one who should be caring. 
Afraid of having her true feelings found out, Haruka raised her voice in an attempt to cover them. Chiaki wore a light smile as she gazed at Haruka's face. As long as she was able to open the door to Haruka's heart, Haruka would become unexpectedly soft and express a rich variety of emotions. This was one of the traits which caused Chiaki to fall in love with her. Seigo, isn't my boyfriend. She told her the truth. I actually haven't known him for all that long, so we haven't moved on to being boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh. That means, as long as time passes, you'll become. Haruka furrowed her eyebrows slightly. I don't know, Chiaki shrugged. If you ask me whether or not he's suitable to become my boyfriend, I'll say yes, and add a definitely in front of yes. Even though we've known each other for only a short time, he's really an amazing as well as handsome guy. He's basically like the main male idol lead in a television drama. No, even an idol actor wouldn't move me as much as he does. If it wasn't for your existence, I would definitely fall in love with him. Actually, I've already fallen for him a little, but one of my best friends fell in love with him first, and I don't want to ruin our relationship. But human emotions are very difficult to control. So I don't know what will happen in the future. Wah! Haruka puffed out her cheeks. Chiaki really wanted to poke her cheeks like she would in the past, but she managed to restrain herself. That's my story. How about you, Haruka? Haruka's face stiffened slightly before she ended up sighing. Okay, I admit it as well, Tetsuo, is not my boyfriend, he's actually my younger cousin. I knew it, you would never fall in love with his type. Chiaki smiled knowingly. Haruka's expression flickered. Tetsuo, is a good guy. It's just, maybe he's a little too arrogant. A little. Ha, fine, I teased him plenty anyways, so I'll let it go with that, Chiaki said casually. If that guy still keeps acting up, Seiji will definitely give him a good lesson. She was certain of this. Seiji Haruda can be quite fearsome if he truly gets angry, after all, at any rate, the two of them went outside quite a while ago, and who knows what they'd been up to. Chiaki suddenly wanted to see the arrogant Tetsuo Sasaki learning a well-deserved lesson from Seiji. That's right, she still bore a grudge towards him. Even if she knew now that he was only a fake boyfriend, she still felt unhappy inside and wanted to see him suffer. Seiji would surely comment about how illogical her grudge was, but this was just a part of her nature. Actually, her taunts just earlier were already unreasonable, but Seiji resolutely stood by her side and helped her out in order to make her feel better. Chiaki was inwardly delighted about this. Just as Seiji said, he wasn't exactly a good person, nor did he believe in right and wrong. He simply helped those he wanted to help, protecting and taking care of his friends. This made Chiaki extremely happy and instilled her with a feeling of safety. Of course, if she went overboard Seiji would surely stop her. This would be a method of protecting her as well, otherwise the situation would get out of control, and she'd be the party who'd bear the brunt of the consequence. At any rate, Seiji Haruda was simply a trustworthy and reliable person. Honestly, you seem so cool, what will happen if I really fall in love with you? Chiaki mentally asked the person who was outside the door. Seiji sneezed. Why am I feeling a sudden chill? He rubbed his nose. He didn't know what was going on inside. But Chiaki would surely be able to take care of things. He had confidence in her. He was a bit bored just standing outside like a door guard, though. With nothing to do, he glanced at the boy beside him, and just happened to notice Tetsuo looking towards him as well. They looked at each other wordlessly for a few seconds before Tetsuo finally piped up. Seigo Harano, right. Seiji raised his eyebrow at the unexpected question. Yes, what is it? Just earlier. Perhaps I was a bit rude. An indescribable light flashed through Tetsuo's eyes. However, you and me, we're different. Sigh. Arrogant people like him are so difficult to deal with. Yeah yeah, you're an excellent student from Kaoki High School, 
you're a genius, you're an elite, you'll definitely be successful in life, you're at a completely different level from a commoner like me, you're so great. Seiji praised Tetsuo in a sarcastic tone that made it obvious it wasn't praise at all. Tetsuo furrowed his eyebrows. He'd already calmed down, so it was easy for him to tell that Seiji didn't mean his praise, but it was difficult for him to say anything back. If he did anything rude, it would hurt Haruka. But there were some things he still needed to say. It's good that you understand, he said lightly. We. Compared with you guys, Haruka and I are vastly different, not only in the school we go to. Chapter 74 Allow me to show you true strength. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 74 Allow me to show you true strength. Translator Imperfect Luck Editor VB24 Grades, Talent, Identity, Family Perhaps you consider all of this quite vulgar, but such is reality. Tetsuo continued speaking in a tone that indicated he was serious. The differences in our school's ranks is just one such actualization of the difference between us. Even if the two of you went to the same school as us, you'd discover that the differences between us can be realized through many other places as well. Haruka N. Chiaki Wakaba's feelings for each other may have been genuine, but they're also a mistake. Haruka originally made the correct decision, but because she's too soft-hearted, she still made a mistake at this point in time. Seiji frowned. What exactly are you trying to say? Tetsuo stared directly into Seiji's eyes in an arrogant manner. What I want to say is, even though Haruka was the one who took the initiative to invite Chiaki Wakaba today, don't think that they'll become what they were before again. Haruka doesn't intend that at all, she took me with her in order to prove, that she still cares about Chiaki Wakaba, but she definitely won't make such a mistake again and have that sort of intimate relationship. You guys. You and Chiaki Wakaba need to recognize it and have zero expectations. Tetsuo warned Seiji in a stern manner. Glancing at the recipient of his speech, he noticed the boy he knew as Seigo Harano looking at him as if he were an idiot. There's an idiot here. Everyone come look. Seiji felt the urge to shout that out loud. Not even taking into consideration this bastard speech about differences, Chiaki never had that sort of intention in the first place, okay. Haruka took you here in order to stop Chiaki from having any second thoughts, while Chiaki took me here in order to. Do you think that she simply brought me here to give me a chance at seeing a beautiful girl? You don't even know the basics of thinking from someone else's viewpoint, is your head filled with nothing but grass. Seiji's mental comments were flowing through his mind like an unstoppable rushing torrential flood. Chiaki only came to meet her ex-girlfriend, and perhaps the situation would develop in some manner after that, but Seiji was 100% certain that she didn't come here in order to make up and become girlfriends again. Yes, she still missed Haruka Shimizu after their breakup, but would she shamelessly want to be intimate with Haruka again after being invited so suddenly? Impossible. Dot Chiaki Wakaba definitely wasn't this type of person. At most, she would want to relive a sweet time together again for the sake of nostalgia and only if Haruka didn't resist the idea. Even if she still wanted to be with Haruka, she would never request it of her own volition, it would have to be Haruka voluntarily saying that out loud. Just what was wrong with Tetsuo Sasaki's brain? Looking down on others to such a degree couldn't even be said to be arrogance anymore, it was pure idiocy. Tetsuo was confused about the way Seiji looked at him. If Seigo had turned grim, or even angry, he would have understood. But what was with looking at him like he was an idiot? Did he make another mistake again? Tetsuo reflected on his previous words. No he didn't say anything wrong. After confirming that to himself, he firmed his resolution once more and looked directly at Seiji, his eyes filled with pride. Seiji felt his energy was draining from him as he saw Tetsuo's unchanging attitude. Forget it, it was useless talking reason to an idiot. It was best to let Tetsuo believe whatever he wants. It's just, it still felt rather unpleasant. 
Sasaki.san, what club are you in at Kawaki High School? He opened his mouth and asked. What was with this sudden question? Tetsuo was confused once again. I'm in the karate club, although I'm not the captain, I've won prize money in various competitions before, he said with a clear note of pride in his voice. Oh. Seiji raised his eyebrows as a grin started to form on his face. If Chiaki or Mika could see him right now, they'd definitely notice that this smile meant, he was up to no good. Since this definitely wasn't Seiji's normal smile, there was something fearsome hidden behind it. Perfect, I've studied freestyle martial arts a little bit myself. Why don't we go someplace empty and have a little duel? Tetsuo furrowed his brows. You want to fight me? Don't make it sound so bad. I'd just like to have a little practice with you, ace member of the karate club, Tetsuo Sasaki.san. There was a dark shadow in Seiji's smile. You said so much just now, so of course you wouldn't back down from such a challenge, would you? This was a direct challenge. Tetsuo Sasaki remained silent for a few moments. If this can help you to realize the difference between us, fine. I'll show you just what true strength is. After Chiaki and Haruka finished their conversation, they walked out of the coffee cafe's room and saw that the two boys weren't waiting for them outside the door. Chiaki called Seiji and found out that the boys were waiting for them on the first floor. When they went downstairs, they saw the two boys sitting by a window. However, Tetsuo Sasaki was collapsed strangely on the table for some reason and wasn't moving. What's with him? Chiaki asked suspiciously. Actually, while waiting for the two of you, we had a friendly little chat. Seiji scratched his face. After learning that Sasaki.san here was the ace member of the karate club, I got a little curious and asked him to teach me, and he kindly agreed to show me the ropes, so we went out to the alleyway behind this cafe and had a little duel, but I didn't control my strength very well and accidentally knocked Sasaki. San out. Chiaki and Haruka were rendered speechless. You too, went out and had a fight. Chiaki squinted and berated Seiji in a righteous manner. How could you do this, Seigo? Even though you're not in any sports clubs, you possess physical abilities that every sports club at our school is drooling over. How could you not go easy on an ordinary person like Sasaki.san? Even though it seemed like she was criticizing Seiji on the surface, her tone made it clear that she was praising him instead. Good job, Seiji. I knew you wouldn't disappoint me. Chiaki had nothing but praise inside her heart. Haruka Shimizu looked stunned as she studied the unconscious brown dot haired boy in front of her. Tetsuo, an ordinary person. Tetsuo Sasaki was one of the ten strongest members of the karate club, which had an abundance of talented members as was natural of Kawaki High School. Tetsuo's family ran a dojo, so he had been practicing karate ever since he was born. Even though he wasn't necessarily the winner of every competition, he always ranked highly in each one, these were feats to be proud of. He definitely had real skill in karate. As his older cousin, Haruka had witnessed Tetsuo's martial arts competitions many times before, and the solid foundation of his training regimen and his slow growth into becoming stronger gave her a deep impression. However, right now, in front of her, her incredibly strong cousin of hers, Tetsuo Sasaki was actually defeated and knocked unconscious, by someone from an ordinary school who wasn't even in any sports clubs. Sorry, I thought he would be really strong, so I used more of my strength than usual, but I didn't expect that. Seiji shrugged. Even though he's unconscious, he shouldn't be seriously injured. Should we? take him to the hospital for an inspection. Chiaki looked towards Haruka. Haruka stood motionless, overcome by a mixture of amazement and shock, so it took her a dozen seconds to regain her senses. She looked back at Chiaki. Chiaki's expression was calm, but her eyes showed she was delighted with this outcome. Haruka slowly turned her gaze towards Seigo Harano. Seiji had an innocent expression on his face. You, just who exactly are you? 
Haruka really wanted to ask him this question as she stared at his handsome face. But right now, Tetsuo's condition was more important. Let them take her cousin to the hospital. Haruka was already imagining how much of an impact Tetsuo would receive after finding out what had happened to him. And if he experienced Chiaki's merciless teasing on top of that, it would be too pitiful. Chiaki definitely wouldn't feel any sympathy for Tetsuo, nor would Seigo Harano, who was on her side. Tetsuo couldn't withstand their taunting to begin with, so if they added oil to the fire. Haruka felt a shiver run down her spine just imagining it. That left her with only one choice. I'll take Tetsuo to the hospital. It's fine, you guys, can just return now. Haruka sighed. That's no good, is it? My Seigo knocked him unconscious after all, so he should be there to apologize when Tetsuo wakes up. Chiaki seemed like she was apologizing, but in reality, she was inwardly holding her sides with laughter. You dare to look down on others, you bastard. Ace member of the karate club at a well-known school. How does it feel to be knocked unconscious by someone at an ordinary school who isn't even in any sports clubs? Yep, I really want to see what kind of expression this Tetsuo Sasaki has when he wakes up. Oh yeah, Chiaki, you're getting a little evil, Seiji thought as he noticed the silver-haired girl's gleeful expression. Although, honestly speaking, Seiji felt a slight urge to see what expression this brown-haired brat would have when he woke up as well, but he decided to be merciful. After all, it would be good to leave him with a little shred of pride. Oh, I think that Sasaki.san probably won't want to see me when he wakes up, since I was so impolite to him, so let's just listen to Shimizu.san instead, Seiji said. Eh, are we letting him go? Man, Chiaki mentally pouted. But since Seiji has spoken already, let's just stop here. What do you think then, Haruka? Is it really fine for us to just leave? Please, go ahead. The blue-haired girl could only helplessly request this from the bottom of her heart. Chapter 75 Secret You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 75 Secret Translator Imperfect Luck Editor VB24 Seiji and Chiaki slowly walked down the street after leaving the coffee cafe. Huh, you actually knocked him unconscious, you're pretty evil, Seigo. No, Seiji. Chiaki broke out into laughter again as she thought back to the previous events. But you did a great job, as expected of my S.ranked weapon. She gave him a huge thumbs dot up. Heh, but of course. Seiji pretended to gaze into the distance. A person capable of defeating me does not exist in this world. After one second of silence, both of them broke out into laughter. What's with those embarrassing words of yours? But it's actually unexpectedly moving, Chiaki stepped closer to Seiji as if it were the natural thing to do and clung on to his arm. We don't need to fake being a couple anymore, do we? We don't. I just feel like doing this. Seiji glanced at the silver dot haired girl. How did, your conversation with her go? Mmm. Should I say that it didn't go very well, or that it was fine? Chiaki had a complex expression. Dot, it doesn't seem like you two have gotten back together again, so what's your current relationship with her? It's, friends, Chiaki said wistfully, a special type of friendship. Friends that miss each other when apart. Perhaps we'll meet each other soon again, but maybe we might never see each other again. Friends like that. Seiji remained silent. Although that Tetsuo Sasaki was nothing more than an idiot, one thing he mentioned was indisputable, the fact that Haruka Shimizu didn't intend to get back together with Chiaki again. Her taking along a fake boyfriend was plenty of evidence for this. And if Haruka didn't intend this, Chiaki definitely wouldn't request it either, so. At any rate, why exactly did Haruka Shimizu invite Chiaki out of the blue? This still remained a mystery. Seiji was waiting for an answer. After a long period of silence. Even though Haruka told me not to tell anyone else, including you. I think I should still let you know. 
Chiaki looked up at Seiji as her eyes flashed with an indescribable light. Are you sure? If it's an important secret, you don't need to tell me. It's not a secret. Air, er, I don't know. Chiaki sighed. I don't know what exactly this is. She didn't know. Seiji furrowed his brows. Haruka, she, first, she asked if I could transfer to Kawaki High School and be normal friends with her again. Chiaki slowly began to speak. Of course, I rejected her and said this wasn't possible. Then, she requested that I take a temporary leave of absence from school. Leave of absence. Seiji was confused. He could understand asking her to transfer schools and be friends again, but what was with the leave of absence request? That's right, a leave of absence. Chiaki nodded. She said she wished for me to not attend Genhana High School for the time being, as there could be danger. Seiji raised his eyebrows. What kind of danger? She didn't tell me what it specifically was, she only said that there was a danger which could cause students to die, Chiaki said in a heavy tone of voice. Hey now, could it be? The only upcoming thing that might be dangerous enough for students to die at Genhana High School. Seiji could only think of one such incident. The Yin Yang Master Duel. Was this what Haruka Shimizu was alluding to? Did she know about it? Was she a person with mystical powers? Successive doubts kept arising in Seiji's mind. It sounds really strange, right? What danger could befall Genhana High School? Chiaki sighed before continuing, but Haruka seemed so serious, she begged me to believe her and do as she requested. She invited me out solely for the purpose of telling me this. Seiji now understood the logic behind Haruka's sudden invitation. But now, new questions arose. For Chiaki, at least. She obviously wasn't making all this up, but she wouldn't tell me anything about the danger. I don't understand why. The silver dot haired girl muttered to herself. And she even told me not to tell anyone else. I honestly don't get it, what kind of secret is this? Something which is dangerous enough to cause the death of high school students is a huge incident. It shouldn't be hidden. Why didn't Haruka tell me the details clearly, ask me to keep it a secret, and tell me to take a leave of absence from school? I don't understand. She refused to speak further on the subject no matter what, so I don't get it. Chiaki looked at the boy by her side. That's why I told you, Seiji. Seiji. Chiaki's sharp senses detected something from Seiji's expression and body language. You, no. She was astonished. Seiji remained silent. Do you perhaps, know what Haruka was talking about? Chiaki slowly began to furrow her brows. Seiji sighed after considering his options. I don't know if what I know is what she was referring to. He faced Chiaki directly. But, it seems quite probable. Chiaki, you know that I recently discussed something with the student council president, something I couldn't tell you and Mika. What Haruka just mentioned to you is, most likely the same topic that I was talking with the president about. Nobody spoke for a while. Chiaki took a good, long look at Seiji's face. I see. She finally ended up nodding. Our school, there's something hidden to it, isn't there? Seiji nodded in response. It's a huge secret that can't be made public. It's for the best if fewer normal people know about it, he said in a soft voice. That's why. I'm so sorry. Chiaki shook her head. If you could, you'd surely tell us. If you can't, that means there's a deep reason behind it. There's no need to feel apologetic. Even though I have my doubts and want to know the truth, I won't pry. You and Haruka are both people I trust. Although it's a little uncomfortable to know that both of you are hiding the same thing from me, I trust that it's for my own good. Chiaki flashed a brilliant smile. I feel sorry towards Haruka as well for telling you something she absolutely insisted on keeping secret, but it seems that you coincidentally knew about it. 
Seiji smiled as well. Yeah, luckily I was the one who heard about it. Honestly, just how big is this secret? What if I told someone else about what Haruka just told me? If it hadn't been you? What would have happened if it had been someone who didn't know what it was about? Chiaki's expression showed a trace of nervousness. Seiji molded over. I doubt much would happen if you did. You'd probably end up a companion who's also oblivious to what is going on. As long as you guys didn't spread any more rumors, that is. Phew. I was so worried. Chiaki pretended to wipe non-existent sweat from her forehead. It's good if it's not that serious. While it is a big secret, nothing should happen as long as you don't go around telling everyone. But keep in mind that if you keep telling people, the consequences would be unpredictable, Seiji warned her in a strict tone of voice. It was best not to even think about the identities of the upper ranks of the Yin Yang masters as they were bent on hiding their existence in order to continue reaping huge benefits. I get it, I won't tell anyone else. Chiaki stuck her tongue out at Seiji. Should I call Haruka and apologize to her? By the way, do you need to talk to her? You both seem to know the same secret, after all. Chiaki's expression was hard to read as she contemplated the thought of Seiji having access to Haruka's number. Seiji considered Chiaki's suggestion. I'm not sure if I need to talk to her, but you might as well give me her contact information. It might come in handy. Giving her ex-girlfriend's cell phone number to the boy that she secretly liked a little, especially considering the fact that they shared a secret together. Chiaki was currently battling with complex, indescribable emotions. Was she, about to NTR herself? No no, she liked both of them so much, if they could become a couple, ding dot dong, Chiaki's mind suddenly envisioned a brand dot new scene that she'd never considered before. This scene dashed away all her uncertainties, and she could feel new horizons opening up for her. If Seiji and Haruka could get together, this seemed pretty good. Chiaki's eyes began sparkling after she felt like she just opened the door to new possibilities. Even though it was currently nothing more than a fantasy, it still seemed possible to her. Possibility meant hopes and dreams. After Seiji entered Haruka Shimizu's phone number into his cell phone contacts, he discovered that. Chiaki's expression had become rather strange. The silver dot haired girl smiled brilliantly as she slapped him heartily on the shoulder. Go ahead and contact Haruka as much as you like. Flirt with her to the best of your ability, I think you have a good chance. Seiji was rendered speechless. What the hell? Chapter 76 Suicide You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 76 Suicide Translator Imperfect Luck Editor VB24 Seiji assumed Chiaki was tired from the long night, causing her to behave so mystifyingly. The night's still young, let's go get a drink together. Denied. It's already getting late, so I'm taking you home now. Objection, Judge. You don't have permission to speak. Chiaki sighed. You're terrible. Seiji countered all of Chiaki's unreasonable requests and took her home. Chiaki lived in an extravagant apartment completely on a different level from Seiji's. Seiji wouldn't even be able to enter unless he had a card or could pass a retina scan. The silver dot haired girl stepped up to the apartment's front gate before she turned around and smiled at Seiji. Thank you so much for accompanying me tonight. Seiji scratched his face. Do you need to be so formal? You're making me feel awkward. Chiaki chuckled. Actually, I wanted to make you embarrassed on purpose. You're so cute like this, I'm going back now. Have a good night. Seiji decisively turned around and waved. Don't. No escaping, I wasn't finished talking yet. Chiaki grabbed onto his hand. What else is there? Seiji heard a light swishing sound. The silver dot haired girl untied her red hairband and let her long hair cascade down her slim shoulders. This scene felt familiar to Seiji as he'd seen similar scenes in animes before. 
even he was forced to admit that Chiaki's current appearance was quite stunning. Chiaki was simply returning to her normal hairstyle, but due to her current clothing and her elegant movements, she exuded a special type of charisma. This. I'm giving it to you. Chiaki placed her red hairband in Seiji's hand. Eh. This was the first present that Haruka ever gave me, but now. I don't need it anymore, Chiaki said with a serious expression. Seiji failed to come up with a suitable reply. That's why I'm giving it to you. You can do whatever you like with it. Throw it away, give it to someone else, or, give it back to Haruka. Chiaki displayed an alluring smile. Then she finally turned around. That's all. Good night, Seiji, wait a moment. Something so important, is it really fine to give this to me? By the way, why are you giving it to me? Shouldn't she be giving it to Mika if she wants to give it away? Seiji was confused by her unexpected gift. Chiaki merely waved at him with her back turned and walked through her apartment's front gate without replying. Seiji stood there stunned for a few minutes before he finally sighed and carefully put away the red hairband. He glanced at the apartment one more time before leaving. This long night had finally ended. A new week, on Monday. Seiji recounted last night's occurrences to Mika on the way to school. He didn't mention the real reason behind Haruka Shimizu's invitation. He only told her that Haruka wanted Chiaki to transfer schools and be friends again, without bringing up her request for Chiaki to take a leave of absence or anything about danger. Nor did he mention the red hair band. That's because after Seiji reached his apartment and checked his system, he was shocked. This, gift, gave him an excessively high amount of points compared to normal. Innumerable emotions must have been contained within this red hairband. Just why did Chiaki give him something so important to her? Seiji couldn't comprehend the reason behind Chiaki's gift, but this definitely wasn't something he should treat carelessly. He decided not to tell Mika for the time being, not because he wanted to conceal it, but because he felt like he shouldn't speak rashly before he deciphered the intentions behind Chiaki's gift. As expected, Mika didn't think too deeply about what Seiji told her, and she accepted his words without question. That person, named Sasaki.san, he was slapped by Haruka then knocked out by you, he seems a little pitiful. I was already kind enough to spare his life. Is that what you call kindness? Mika's eyes were becoming unfocused. Do you wish to behold how cruel I can really be? Seiji pretended to adjust a pair of imaginary glasses. I don't want to know. How regrettable. You've missed an opportunity to see the world for what it really is. What does this have to do with the truth of the world? Mika retorted forcefully. Yep, today there was a pleasant atmosphere as well. At this point in time Seiji didn't expect what he was about to face next would be, rather unpleasant. Beov after reaching school, Seiji removed some love letters from his shoe locker again, greeted Chiaki, and went to class together with the silver dot-haired girl and Mika. Everything was normal. During class time. Chiaki, what do you intend to do about Shimizu.san's request? Seiji asked her when he met her in the hallway after using the bathroom. To tell the truth, he would have preferred to ask her what she wanted him to do with the red hairband. However, he felt like she'd just tell him some excuse as it wasn't an appropriate time to yet. About that. I haven't decided. What do you think? Chiaki asked him a question in return. Danger is only a possibility, but taking a temporary leave of absence will indeed lower the risk to the minimum, Seiji said firmly. It's just that if you take a leave of absence, even without considering how to apply for it, you'll fall behind in classes, you won't be able to attend drama club, and you'll even miss the upcoming school festival. Yeah, I know, so even though it's Haruka requesting me, I'm still hesitating about it. Chiaki sighed. I know she cares about me, and I want to acquiesce to her wish, but taking a leave of absence. That's a lot to ask for. I don't care about my classes as much, but as for drama club. If I take a leave of absence now, I'd feel bad for everyone in drama club. 
Besides, if I take a vacation by myself, I'd feel like. I abandoned everyone else and escaped by myself. Chiaki looked toward Seiji. What do you think I should do? As she asked this, the conversation options appeared, A, you should take a leave of absence so that Haruka can rest assured. B, I can't make this decision for you. C, stay at school, I'll protect you no matter what happens. Conversation options appearing meant that this was an important answer which would affect Chiaki's route, whether or not she would take a leave of absence from school. Conversation options would appear from time to time, but Seiji typically ignored them nowadays as he preferred answering with what he believed rather than answering insincerely in order to improve a girl's favorability rating. As for what he preferred this time, he thought option B was the best, since he truly didn't feel like he should make such an important decision for Chiaki. But considering what might happen in the near future, he decided to make a save file for this point in time. If danger truly befell the school in the future, he could return to this time and tell Chiaki choice A in order to keep her safe. After saving, Seiji finally replied to Chiaki. I can't make this decision for you, you have to decide on your own. Haruka and school are both important to you, so you must resolve to choose the one which is more important to you. The system didn't give him a notification of improved favorability rating towards him this time. If this was a dating sim instead of real life, this would definitely be the wrong choice. Option C was obviously the correct route, whoops, the correct choice to improve favorability rating. Chiaki smiled. I knew you would say that. You should have taken this opportunity to act cool. You should have told me to stay at school and promise to protect me. If you said that, I might even fall in love with you, Seiji chuckled. Why do I need to make you fall in love with me? You're making it sound like I love to act cool. Eh, you don't. Of course not. Chiaki chuckled when she heard that. Even though she didn't receive the answer she wanted to hear, this felt more like Seiji's style. He doesn't need to act cool because he's already cool. The two of them returned to class after their conversation ended. Not long after, the bell rang, signaling the beginning of the next class. Just like always, the students, the teachers, the classes, the weather, and everything else was normal. It was a beautiful sunny day outside, and the temperature was cool and comfortable. It was a day perfectly suited for taking a stroll outside. Time passed just like this, and there was only one class remaining before lunch. Right before class began, someone suddenly called Seiji. When he checked his cell phone, he saw it was Hoshi Amami. Hey, Amami. Seiji took the call. I heard you got a cold, how are you feeling now? There was no response on the other side. Amami. Seiji furrowed his brows, sensing that something was wrong. He still received no response. Hoshi Amami, is that you? Say something. Seiji raised his voice. Senpai. He finally received a response, in a voice he could barely hear. I'm sorry. Sorry. What did that mean? Seiji suddenly had an ominous premonition. Hey, Amami, why are you apologizing? Where are you right now? He stood up and began yelling. His sudden movement and loud voice attracted all the other students' attention in the classroom. The bell rang for class, and the teacher arrived at the classroom. Hoshi, answer me. Seiji's voice was now louder than the bell's ringing. Almost everyone jumped upon hearing him, and the elderly teacher almost dropped the textbook he was holding. Harano.san, what's the matter? asked the language teacher, an old man over 50 years of age, as he adjusted his glasses. All the students were looking in Seiji's direction. Seiji didn't care about any of this right now. Hoshi Amami didn't say anything else in the call, all he could hear was the beeping sound which indicated Hoshi had hung up. Seiji instantly called him back. Harano.san, what are you doing? The elderly teacher asked him again, his voice tinged with a note of displeasure. Seiji glanced at the teacher. 
Sorry, sensei, he said bluntly as he rose from his seat. I'm going to skip class. He left with that sentence, and everyone could only watch on in stunned amazement as he swiftly exited the classroom. Chiaki and Mika exchanged glances filled with confusion and worry. Harano.san, what's the matter with him? Who's? Hoshi. Where is he going? I've never seen such a cool method of skipping class. The students were all discussing what happened with each other. Cough cough, the teacher interrupted everyone's discussion by coughing. How, unseemly, he exclaimed angrily. Outside the classroom. Seiji ran rapidly through the hallway, jumping down two or three steps at a time when he reached the stairs. He was still unable to get a call through to Hoshi. He didn't know where Hoshi was currently, so he could only, run to the middle school section. With his speed, it didn't take him much time to arrive at the middle school section. But when he arrived, he noticed a crowd of people circled around the school building. Upon seeing this, Seiji instantly knew he was too late. A group of teachers with either solemn or terrified expressions huddled together, their eyes fixed on the ground. There was something red lying there. Hoshi Amami. Seiji rushed over. All the teachers turned around in unison to look at him. It almost seemed like a ridiculous comedy scene. Who are you? Don't come over here. Wait a moment, he shouted out this child's name. Someone he knows. Get away. Seiji rushed towards the group of teachers and roughly pushed aside those in his way so that he could get a clear look of what they were looking at. What he saw was, something he definitely didn't wish to see. Dark crimson blood coated the floor, and a pungent smell wafted into Seiji's nose. A feminine dot figured boy clothed in a middle school uniform lay motionless on the floor. Ah! You bastard! Seiji's roar pierced through the skies. Hoshi Amami, third dot your middle schooler at Genhana Middle School. Today was a bright and sunny new Monday morning. Today was the day that Hoshi Amami jumped out of the school building and fell to his death. Chapter 77 You Must Fight On You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 77 You Must Fight On Translator Imperfect Luck Editor VB24 Load after carving that horrifying scene deep into his mind, Seiji instantly chose to load. The world around him turned dark before lighting up again. In this point in time, he was talking to Chiaki, and the three conversation options appeared in front of him again. He didn't expect that he would have to make use of this save file so quickly. Seiji forced himself to hide the grimness he felt from Chiaki, and answered exactly the same way as last time. Then he returned to class just like last time. Seiji instantly took out his cell phone and called Hoshi Amami. This time, the call connected. Senpai. Amami, no, Hoshi, I heard you caught a cold, how are you feeling? Seiji asked in a calm voice, although he was clenching his fists. There was a long period of silence. I. I'm fine, thanks for caring about me, Senpai. A soft voice finally responded. Caring about him. Seiji felt a twinge of guilt. You don't sound like you're doing fine. Senpai. Did something happen after that incident with your sisters? Silence fell for several moments again. Nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Then why would you commit suicide? Seiji frowned deeply. Senpai. It's almost time for class to begin. Hoshi sounded like he wanted to hang up the call. Cut class. What? I don't care what class you have next, skip it. Seiji started walking out of his class as he said this. S, skip class. Hoshi was clearly shocked. That's right. Afterwards, go to the roof of the middle school building and wait for me there. All the school buildings in Genhana's middle and high school sections had roofs that were unlocked at all times, but they were fenced off with 10.meter.tall steel mesh wire fences. 
the only opening in the fences were the tiny holes between the links. So if Hoshi wanted to jump off from the building and commit suicide, the roof was actually the most difficult place to do it from. Wait for you. Senpai, what? I'm coming over there right now. Seiji said in a forceful tone. Don't hang up, keep your cell phone on this call until I see you. Hoshi Amami's body began trembling as he listened to the forceful voice coming from his cell phone. Senpai, was about to come over and see him. All Senpai did was ask me a few questions over the phone, and I said I was fine already, but he, Hoshi felt a warm feeling in his heart from his Senpai's obvious concern. He couldn't help but begin to move. He left his seat, walked out of class, and ignored everything. He went to the roof as Senpai instructed him to and waited. Had the sky always been so wide? After reaching the roof, Hoshi looked past the tall fence at the sky and slowly walked towards the fence. Today was a wonderful day with no clouds in sight. The pure blue sky was beautiful to behold. Hoshi acted as though it was the first time he'd ever seen this beautiful scene as he looked at it dazedly. As he gazed upwards, the dark feelings in his heart began to dissipate. Just earlier, he had lied to Harano. Senpai. He wasn't feeling fine, something definitely happened. What he had experienced was a nightmare. He didn't know what to do, and the dark feelings in his heart had magnified to the extent where he felt like he was about to be swallowed. He was already at the point where he wanted to die and end it all. Compared to living, death seemed so relaxing. Hoshi. A forceful voice rang out from behind him. Hoshi trembled upon hearing the voice and slowly turned around. He saw Seiji putting away his cell phone as he walked towards Hoshi. Something shone in the eyes of the tall and handsome figure standing before him as he looked directly at Hoshi. Those eyes seemed like they could pierce through the darkness. Ah, senpai, Seigo Harano. Senpai. The moment Hoshi Amami saw his senpai, he finally realized that he had actually wanted to see him. But, even if he met his senpai again, what could senpai possibly do? Seiji looked towards Hoshi. He furrowed his brows as he recalled the scene he had just witnessed. It's been a week since we last saw each other, junior of mine, yes. Senpai. The two of them remained silent for a moment. This is my first time ever going up to the school roof. Seiji suddenly broke the silence. Eh. I was really looking forward to receiving a girl's love letter which invited me to the school roof where she would confess to me. Such a classic scene. Seiji spoke slowly as he walked towards Hoshi. But now, the first person waiting for me on a school roof is a boy instead. My hopes have been ruined. How will you make this up to me? Senpai seemed to be complaining as he glared at Hoshi. Hoshi was too stunned to say anything. Silence reigned over them for a short period of time. Man, you don't even know how to make a comeback. Seiji sighed. You need to learn more, junior of mine. Oh, oh. Hoshi was still in a daze. Seiji looked at him. You didn't really have a cold, right? Why didn't you come to work? Air. Hoshi averted his gaze. What happened in the past week? Hoshi remained silent with his head lowered. A dark shadow seemed to appear on his face. Seiji slowly raised his head 40.5 degrees upwards to look at the sky after seeing the pretty boy in front of him, who seemed to stand in the darkness instead of the sunshine. Last week, you were much cooler. Even though you seemed a bit feminine, and not much like a boy, at least you knew that you wanted to change yourself. At that time, you were definitely a man. Senpai. Hoshi slowly raised his head. But what exactly is the current you? Seiji didn't look at him, and instead continued looking up at the sky. You're depressed and downcast. Your entire person has become dark. Not only are you no longer a man, you no longer even seem like a cute girl. You're not a boy, or a girl, you're only a loser dog. Feeling ashamed, Hoshi lowered his head again. Hey, 
Hoshi Amami. I personally believe that we need to fight to get what we want in life. Things we don't like, things that are unreasonable or unacceptable. Things we want to avoid but still meet up with, anything bad that's difficult to tolerate is something we must fight. And when I say fight, I don't mean just using physical violence. For example, a child that's being ignored will desperately misbehave in order to attract attention. A female prisoner that's been declared guilty when innocent will scream and cry that she wants to live. There are many methods of fighting, but what's most important is possessing the willpower to never give up. As long as you still have the will to resist, then it doesn't matter how ugly your struggle is. It's a fight. Seiji finally shifted his gaze back towards Hoshi. Hoshi, perhaps you fought already, but have you truly fought your utmost? Why have you given up your resistance? Continue your struggle. Who cares if you fall into a swamp and get covered in mud, or if you look terrible and ugly, you can still lift up your head and shout, can't you? Senpai. Tears began dripping down Hoshi's downturned face. If you don't even have the energy to struggle anymore, then why don't you use the final remnants of your energy to think about what other methods you still have left other than struggling, no matter how unseemly they are? Seiji stared at Hoshi. I'm talking about asking for help. Even if you can't struggle anymore, you can't even bring yourself to ask for help. Is your spirit so weak that you don't even have a shred of resistance anymore? Answer me, Hoshi Amami. Senpai. Senpai. I. Hoshi was no longer able to stop his tears from flowing out. He began choking up, and his runny nose soon ensured that his face was coated with snot. His previously beautiful face was nowhere to be seen. Seiji took a deep look at Hoshi. I'm standing right here, junior of mine. As your senpai, I have the responsibility to assist you. But nobody can help someone who's already given up on himself. I don't have that power. So, ask me for help, you bastard. Even if you don't even have a shred of resistance left in you, find it somewhere deep within your soul. It doesn't matter how pathetic you seem, how ugly you seem, or how underhanded it is. Don't accept defeat, and continue fighting. Wah! Wah! Hoshi Amami began crying out loudly this time as his body collapsed, devoid of energy. He crouched on the roof's floor with his body curled into a ball as he cried. He seemed so small, so weak. However, something within him that had been buried so deeply was beginning to break free from the darkness within him. Help me. Please, help me. Help me. Save me. Senpai. A clear voice which sounded as if came directly from Hoshi's soul broke through the tears. Seiji finally smiled in relaxation for the first time while watching Hoshi. I hear you, Hoshi, he stated in a firm yet gentle voice. Leave things to me. Chapter 78 I'll be your playmate. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 78 I'll be your playmate. Translator Imperfect Luck Editor VB24 A cool breeze was blowing. After Hoshi had calmed down, Seiji attentively listened to his story in silence. The day of the incident with Hoshi's sisters. Last Monday, exactly one week ago, Hoshi Amami had been contemplating things after he'd separated from Seigo Harano. He was unable to make a decision between his sisters and his senpai, whom he greatly admired. Hoshi was unable to believe that his sisters had such wicked personalities as Seiji had stated. On the other hand, there was no way for him to ignore the stern warning his senpai had just given him about them. He was stuck with his frustrations even after school ended. He stayed in the club rooms as late as possible until Hoshi was forced to go home. When he returned home, Ryan and Katomi Amami acted like nothing had happened at all. In front of their parents, the twin sisters acted just like they always did. They were laughing, teasing him, and speaking cutely. Dinner time with his family seemed warm and comforting on the surface. But the more it seemed to appear this way, the more Hoshi felt it was abnormal. 
his sisters had been looked down on to such a degree and insulted humiliatingly. Was it possible for them to act just like normal as if nothing had happened? Impossible. Hoshi's heart was telling him that. However, he ignored it. Perhaps his sisters were actually magnanimous. He wanted to believe that, just like how he wanted to believe that the warm dinner scene in front of him right now was real. However. I have something to announce. His father spoke up. My company is giving me a new project to work on. For the next few nights I'm going to work overtime at the company, and sleep there instead of returning home. Overtime. Hoshi had his doubts. His father was indeed busy with work, but suddenly working overtime for several nights in a row. Before he could ask, his mother spoke up as well. Actually, I have an announcement as well. There's something happening at Grandpa's place that I need to go over and take care of, so I need to leave home for a few days as well. Mother was leaving as well. Hoshi was no longer doubtful, he was now shocked. Why? Was it all just a coincidence? His mind was thrown into chaos. At this moment, he exchanged glances with his sisters sitting across from him. Ryan and Katomi had light smiles on their faces. Their seemingly innocuous smiles seemed to turn into masks that were concealing something icy cold underneath. BDNVL.M Hoshi Amami froze solid. Although it was just for a short moment, and perhaps it was merely a hallucination caused by the lighting, the image he had just witnessed gave him a huge impact, and he etched the scene deep into his heart. His parents were still speaking, but Hoshi was no longer listening. By the time he regained his senses, he noticed that his parents were jovially looking at his twin sisters. In fact, his parents seemed to be smiling widely, it almost seemed as if they were sucking up to his sisters. Got it, mom, dad, we'll take good care of the house and our brother, the sisters chuckled as they happily promised their parents to take care of him. What a beautiful scene it was. But Hoshi, who had been ignored by his parents, suddenly felt the urge to vomit as he saw his sisters smiling at him. Disgusting. Why, did he feel that way? Hoshi suddenly remembered the sentence that he'd heard from Senpai earlier today. I want to vomit just at the sight of people like you. Senpai. Seigo Harano Senpai. Were you feeling like this, at that moment? Those who avoid the truth will eventually end up being swallowed by it. That was another sentence from Senpai. Hoshi finally understood what he'd meant. This was what he had been unconsciously avoiding and escaping. He could have recognized it for what it was. He could have discovered it long ago. As the closest person to his sisters, being their younger brother, he should have seen his sisters for who they really were. But he didn't. And that was why, just as Senpai had warned him, he was completely swallowed up by the ugly truth that night. Over the course of one week. From Monday night to Sunday night, Hoshi Amami had constantly been suffering from Ryan and Katomi's torture. His body wasn't particularly injured, but his mental state was suffering tremendously. His parents weren't home, no, Seiji was certain that Hoshi's sisters had something to do with that. Those twins even had their parents under their control. This was definitely something that the twin witches would do and had the ability to do. Perhaps it sounded ridiculous that two teenagers could control adults like this, but Seiji knew that it wasn't impossible. As long as you gave the teenagers the outer appearance of beautiful girls, it would be easy for people to lower their guards. It would be quite easy for the extortionists the twins were to understand and make use of this. Since the extortionists were their own children, not to mention children who seemed to behave so excellently, this gave their parents the necessary excuse to not oppose their wishes seriously and even spoil them to such an extent. Although Seiji didn't know when such a thing began, he guessed that this type of twisted relationship in Hoshi's family must have existed for a long period of time already, being one of the important factors in causing those twins to become like that. Perhaps it was even the main cause. After all, as kids who controlled their parents, the twisted enjoyment they probably received out of it would be tremendously fearsome. 
the twins might have developed twisted personalities while they were young and become abnormal before their mental states matured. Seiji was no psychologist. While his experience from a previous life allowed him to see through those sisters as well as make some educated guesses about their personalities, he was unable to completely analyze and understand them. Nor did he want to. After all, neither the reason behind the twins' twisted personality nor the Amami family's fall into depravity had anything to do with him. All he did was promise Hoshi Amami that he would save him. That was why Seiji was clear about his next course of action. He asked for Hoshi's cell phone and made a call. It was already class time currently, and there were a few other students around, but that didn't interfere with him making his call in a corner of the roof. Ryan and Katomi Amami. Beautiful twins as well as unmistakable, witches. The call connected. Our dear brother, your sisters were just looking for you, Seiji heard the low sound of cackling from Hoshi's cell phone. It's been an entire week without being able to see that senpai you respect so much, you must be so lonely, right? Go ahead and see him during lunch break, but you can only say what we tell you to say. Senpai is a huge liar, I hate you. You absolutely have to say this to him, it's just a little prank, and if you don't do this, the punishment you receive tonight will double, and your senpai that you respect so much will undergo even worse pranks than you, Seiji was speechless after hearing this phone call. Ha <laughs> ha, he understood the situation now. This phone call had been the breaking point for Hoshi. He began chuckling coldly. What an interesting prank, you too. His tone of voice was just as icy as his laughter. This caused the cackling sounds on the other side of the call to disappear. But I still don't think it's interesting enough. What do you think about meeting up and doing something even more interesting? Ryan Amami, Katomi Amami, you too enjoy playing. I, Seigo Harano, will be more than happy to accompany you. Chapter 79 Let's go visit hell together you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 79 Let's go visit hell together translator. Imperfect luck editor. VB24 The angry shouting from the cell phone seemed to pierce through time and space. Ryan Amami, who was holding on to her cell phone in the classroom, was completely frozen solid in both body and spirit, as was her sister Katomi, who was seated beside her. The terror they felt last week from facing this boy instantly resurfaced. It was akin to encountering a ferocious beast. Seigo Harano. The person that they couldn't see through, yet he saw through them. After a week's time, they thought that their fear had already dissipated. In fact, they even believed it to be their hallucination. That was because they carried out an investigation on him. Seigo Harano, the legendary transfer student who was confirmed to have defeated the tennis and basketball clubs single dot handedly. By accomplishing this feat, he received the nickname Destroyer of Clubs, causing all the remaining sports clubs to vie with each other vigorously to acquire him. But exaggerated stories aside, this only meant that he was a boy who had above dot average physical ability and talent in sports. What caught their attention more was the fact that his transfer to Genhana High School was rumored to have something to do with Natsuya Yorohana, a true scion of an extraordinarily powerful family. Two weeks after transferring in, he had been seen visiting the student council office twice, both times to have a discussion with Natsuya Yorohana. There were no other student council members present either time, except possibly Hitaka Shuho, but the vice president was someone who treated everyone coldly and remained solidly faithful to President Yorohana. She had almost no interaction with other students, so it was impossible to acquire any information from her. That was why it was impossible for them to establish the nature of Seigo Hirano's relationship with Natsuya Yorohana. This was the point that the twins were most worried about. But Seigo Harano only visited President Yorohana twice in two weeks, and there were no other reports of them being seen together. Both twins had separately asked many other students and student council members, learning that Seigo Harano and Natsuya Yorohana didn't seem to have much to do with each other, this didn't seem like it was false. From this they inferred Seigo and Natsuya weren't actually that close, perhaps they weren't even friends. 
Was it that Seigo and Natsuya's parents were friends? Was that their relationship to each other? If that was the case, then the Harano family must also be at a similar level to the Yorohana family, to even be able to speak to the Yorohanas. Seigo Harano's powerful eyes, which saw through them instantly as well as, his grave and dignified bearing could be explained this way. A young master from a great family would definitely be different from ordinary people. If that was his true identity, then Seigo wasn't someone that the twins could afford to mess with. However, Seigo Harano was someone who currently lived alone and worked in order to make a living. According to the person himself, he had been exiled from his family due to a past mistake. Just what kind of an act had he committed to be punished with expulsion? Seigo refused to say, and only his two close friends might know the truth of the matter. Chiaki Wakaba and Mika Uehara kept their lips firmly closed on this subject, but it must have been something big. Someone who had been exiled from his family. In the end, thinking that Seigo Harano was from a powerful family was nothing more than the twins' hypothesis. The fact of the matter was that he had left home, was living by himself, and had to work to support himself. This was basically a confirmation that he was no longer under the protection of his family. Out of an abundance of caution, Ryan and Katomi Amami even went to the extent of using the students under their control to follow and spy on Seigo since last Wednesday. The report they received matched the rumors. Every time Seigo left school, he would go either back home to the Uehara apartment where he lived, or go to work at Rika Amami's confectionery store. Apart from that, the only exceptions were on Saturday and Sunday night. He went to Silver Valley together with Mika Uehara and Chiaki Wakaba on Saturday, and met up with only Chiaki in Silver Valley on Sunday. On Saturday night, the three of them went shopping together at a high-dot-class department store. On Sunday night, Seigo and Chiaki went to a high-dot-class coffee cafe and stayed inside for a period of time before exiting and going straight home. There was no evidence that they were having an indiscreet relationship, but that didn't matter. The pictures taken of them were good enough evidence as weapons for the twins. Ryan and Katomi Amami were full of confidence in the results of their investigation. They were certain that they'd be able to defeat him like all the other boys before him. They would defeat Seigo Harano, the boy who seemed so imposing, and completely conquer, even control, him. Today, they gave their lovely brother the order to begin their attack against Seigo. Hoshi had been trained by them for an entire week and had completely lost his will to resist, they'd turned him into a little puppy who was even more obedient than before. Dot however. The response received was this one. Hoshi's cell phone was actually in Seigo Hirano's hands. Ryan and Katomi Amami finally discovered the truth. The fear from before was like a parasite that wormed itself deep into their bones, it never left. The terror they felt back then had been no hallucination. They'd spent a considerable amount of time plotting their nefarious scheme against Seigo Harano. The first step they intended was using Hoshi to shake Seigo's emotions. After that, they would expose his inappropriate relationship with Chiaki Wakaba, then add more vicious rumors about Mika Uehara so that his two female friends would be shaken as well and abandon him, isolating and frustrating him. But this seemingly perfect plan of theirs met an obstacle already, at the most critical first step which they absolutely didn't think would fail. Hoshi. They had spent an entire week using various methods to completely destroy that weak.spirited, weak.willed, good.for.nothing brother of theirs. How could Hoshi possibly take the initiative to go and find Seigo? This shouldn't have been possible. In their eyes, their younger brother should have become the most obedient puppy of all, with no more will to resist existing. However, nevertheless. Answer me, you too. The icy voice continued speaking, proving that this was all real. No matter how much they didn't want to believe it. Seigo Harano had locked on to and was targeting them. The things they'd done to Hoshi were exposed now. Their plot would be unable to proceed as planned. You're not going to answer. Then I'm going over right now to find you. Maybe it's not kind to Hoshi, 
but I won't hesitate to reveal the truth. I'm going to tell your entire class, in the loudest voice I can, everything you've done to your little brother. Then, what do you think will happen? Ha <laughs> ha, I'm sure it'll be an interesting scene, hey, let's go visit hell together. Which is? The first part of Sago's speech contained anger, but the last half had nothing but ice.cold fury. Witches. The entire school called them witches with various complex meanings attached to the nickname. They were actually quite proud of being addressed by this nickname. But when Sago called them that, they felt it was terrifying. They felt like a frog that was being targeted by a snake. They felt like a witch who had a paladin sword against her throat. They felt like, witches that were judged to be executed. Let's go visit hell together. Seigo Harano definitely wasn't joking, he'd been absolutely serious. He was going to come over here and tell everyone about what they'd done. And, they didn't even dare to imagine what would happen afterwards. Because no matter what, it was certain that they'd be ruined. Since everything was true. The things they did to Hoshi. The unspeakable, cruel, and abusive way in which they treated him would be completely exposed to everyone. Everything that they carefully constructed up to now would be destroyed and collapse. Ryan and Katomi Amami had come to this realization, causing blood to drain from their faces, and turning them as pale as vampires. They were just like vampires living in the darkness. Beautiful, strong, and long dot lived. They drank human blood and were proud of being higher up on the food chain than ordinary humans, which lead to arrogance forming over time, making even the abuse of other humans into an elegant art form. The only thing they couldn't resist was the sun. The sunlight was coming for them. If they didn't do anything about it, they'd turn into dust under that blinding sunshine. W. Wait. The twin sisters panically shouted in unison. Chapter 80 Go forth and defeat the witches, hero. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 80 Go forth and defeat the witches, hero. Translator Imperfect Luck Editor VB24 Another Rooftop, this time in the high school section. It was almost time to go to class, so the students were all returning to the classrooms. Seiji passed by these students who were oblivious to the shocking chain of events as he went upstairs. Seiji had already contacted Chiaki and Mika with his cell phone and informed them about the situation. They were waiting for him by the staircase. Seiji had one hand in his pocket when he appeared. He was walking with heavy steps, almost rhythmically. There was a sharp gaze coming from his eyes, and his entire body was giving off a powerful, pressuring aura. Chiaki and Mika felt like they were witnessing a soldier about to head off to the battlefield, equipped to the fullest. Chiaki felt a sliver of pity for the twin witches. If it was her, she would never want to face off against Seiji in his current state, because the normal open and friendly Seiji had turned into a seemingly demonic existence, who would destroy anything in his path. No, he would only be a demonic existence to his enemies. For the people he protected, he was still someone who could defeat all the wicked. A hero. Seiji. Mika softly called out to him as he approached. Seiji stopped and smiled at her. No need to worry, I'll take good care of things. You guys just need to help me take good care of Hoshi. He's currently in the courtyard, sitting where we usually eat lunch at. Mika nodded as she focused on Seiji's face. Then, Seiji fixed his gaze on Chiaki. If there was some background music playing right now, it would definitely be some hot dot blooded battle music. Chiaki smiled as well. Go forth and defeat the witches, hero. Just leave your back and your junior to us. Seiji chuckled. He didn't say anything to Chiaki, all he did was give her a big thumbs. Up with his left hand as he walked off. So cool. Chiaki and Mika deeply etched this scene into their minds. They had no doubts about what the conclusion would be. All they needed to do was wait. On the rooftop. The beautiful twin sisters were waiting. 
time seemed to pass as slow as a snail to them. They were quite uncomfortable with waiting. But time also seemed so short, as they would have preferred to wait for a little longer. Calm down, calm down. Ryan and Katomi Amami had told each other that many times over already, but their hearts still beat quickly, ignoring their orders. Unfortunately, the person they were waiting for wasn't someone they were about to confess their love to, instead, it was the opposite. They only met him once before, and he left them with such a fearful impression. Just one phone call forced them here today, he was a true monster. Seigo Harano. He was no normal human, he was a demon, a beast in human flesh. Dot the twins were cursing him in their hearts, they lacked their usual composure. How could they deal with this monster? The plot they had been cooking up was useless now. It was to be a direct face dot off, which was quite disadvantageous for them. Seigo had the trump card of, what happened to Hoshi? If he was a normal person, he should have been worried about harming Hoshi, so he wouldn't publicize those things, but he was no ordinary person. Those threats they heard on the cell phone were no mere bluffs. Let's go visit hell together, just thinking back to this sentence, Ryan and Katomi felt chills running down their spines and they felt the urge to shiver. A heartless demon, that was who Seigo Harano truly was. Nonetheless, they were still fortunate. Seigo still wanted to maintain his hypocritical F.A.Ade and act the part of a hero of justice. That was why they still had a chance. The trump card he had in Hoshi was also their trump card. If he wanted to protect Hoshi Thou roughly, he would need them to delete all the embarrassing pictures and videos they took of him in their training sessions. That was why it could be said that each had a trump card. No, wait. He still had the advantage, since he was willing to publicize everything, but they couldn't, as they wouldn't be able to bear the consequences. So, they calculated it as a 70% advantage to Seigo with only 30% in their favor. 30% definitely wasn't enough. They needed something else up their sleeves. Did Seigo Harano have any personal weaknesses? None. There definitely weren't any. He had a simple life of only school and work, he didn't have any bad habits like smoking, drinking, or fighting. He also didn't seem to be engaged in any inappropriate relationships. In conclusion, there was nothing dark about him at all, or at least the twins couldn't find anything. The only possibilities were the secret nature of his relationship with President Yorahana, as well as his intimate relationship with Mika Uehara and Chiaki Wakaba. However, they weren't able to make use of either. Ryan and Katomi Amami had plotted to create a weakness in Seigo, but they hadn't been able to carry out their scheme yet. So they currently had nothing they could use on Seigo Harano whatsoever. The twin witches began to use their brains for nefarious purposes once more. Step, step, step. Rhythmic steps approached from the staircase. Then he appeared. A tall and handsome boy, the twins currently saw his bright appearance as nothing more than an excellent mask for concealing his true self. The terror in their hearts worked to twist Ryan's and Katomi's perception of Seigo Harano. They didn't know the true source of their fear, or perhaps they didn't comprehend it, or maybe it was that they didn't even try to understand it. Seiji looked at the twins. Your current expressions are far more appealing than the first time I met you. No anger, no insults, only calmness. The twins were surprised at this, and it showed on their faces. Are you surprised that I didn't start right off by insulting you? Seiji stared intently at them. If insulting you whenever I see you would take care of this problem, I'd do that. But it obviously won't, so I won't do something so meaningless. He walked closer and closer to them as he spoke. The twins tensed up, and their beautiful faces were devoid of expression. He stopped after reaching a certain distance from them. There was one second of silence. Then. Seiji squinted slightly at them. Now let's begin our discussion. The atmosphere suddenly became heavier. Ryan and Katomi instantly felt as if they were being pressured from all sides by the air. All he did was calmly say something ordinary. 
but it made them feel like this rooftop had become a violent battlefield. It was difficult for them to breathe. They could hear their each and every labored breath. Before they were able to recover, he continued speaking. First, you need to delete or destroy every picture, video, or whatever else you have on Hoshi Amami as blackmail. And you can never do anything to harm him again. He was speaking in an indescribably strict tone of voice which seemed as inflexible as steel. Rather than a discussion, it was more like, he was giving them an order.